M1's an extension of P1, and it's it's actually a smaller task, a shorter task anyway, or it should be, although the analysis is possibly slightly more challenging. This from the specification, learners are required to identify the features of games for different audiences, compare the use of features, and comment on their suitability for different audiences and genre. So in yellow are the three key parts to this task. The features of games, and these are the games that you've already talked about, the three that you chose for P1, and how these games link to their different audiences and genre. So you've got three different areas that you're looking at here for this M1 task. So this just to make it even clearer for you that you've got the game and the game has a genre and an audience. So you're gonna need to show that you understand what genre is and what the genres of the games that you've described are and you're also going to need to show that you know about audience in terms of different types of gamers and who might play the games that you're describing. So I'm going to go in and describe each of these in turn features, audience and genre and that should enable you to write, I recommend, a paragraph which contains these three elements in it. So a paragraph for each of your games or a paragraph div divided into three where for each game you're going to talk about uh, its features and how they link to genre and audience. And I'll give you some help in how you can actually bring all of this together over the course of the next five or so minutes. These are the, uh, the game features you looked at in P1. This was a long list and you described these in great detail. You will not need to describe all of these, but there are some that lend themselves uh, more to this task than others. And if we go through those, uh, the one, the key ones in here, I guess that uh, the view, the first or third person view, could be uh, could be really important. I think that uh, player characters could also be a vital part of it. Um, and then I think going on and looking at achievement and attainment. Well, I've, I've boiled this list down so that when uh, when you're actually doing this task, you could probably look at these as being key areas of focus in your game. So first of all we've got the idea of the graphical user interface or the way that the player interacts with the game the colors of the game might appeal or appeal to different age groups to different audiences scoring achievement the number of rules a backstory to the game uh, the peggy rating in terms of uh, grand theft auto being an 18 and doodle jump being for anyone um, also the language used and the complexity of the game itself and thinking about the complexity of the rules perhaps as well. So that gives you an idea of the sorts of areas, the sorts of characteristics, the features of the games that you're going to be focusing on when thinking about genre and audience. We're going to look at audience first of all and think about the type of gamer that you that you could be describing who would play the games that you've selected and this will be the same games that you chose in P1. So first of all, we can have a look at the idea of the casual gamer. The casual gamer is somebody who will play a variety of games. They will pick them up and put them down as they see fit. They're not obsessed with games, but they enjoy playing games. They don't take it too seriously. They may not finish the games and they may jump from title to title. Typically, they'll be playing it on a, uh, on a platform such as a mobile device or a browser, but then they're not someone who plays games, who lives for playing games. So that's the casual gamer. The next sort of gamer we can think about is the player of casual games. Now I know that sounds very similar to the previous one, but actually it's a different sort of uh, personality altogether. Again, plays a variety of games similar to the casual gamer, but the games tend to be simple. So it's the games that we're describing here, not the gamer. So simple games that you can pick up and put down. Farmville is an, is an example of that. Um, Doodle Jump. Um, however, their attitude towards gaming can be anything from very relaxed, they'll pick it up and put it down, to being quite obsessed. So this is more about the sort of game they're gonna play rather than describing how they're going to play it. I think the next one is the one that probably everyone recognises. It's the type of gamer that's often depicted um, in films, the sort of exaggerated uh, characteristics of a typical gamer, someone who's covered in, uh, in crisps, who sits there playing, uh, playing games to the detriment of everything else in their life. And that's the, uh, that's the hardcore gamer. 
probably a bit of a tough characterization that, but they take gaming very seriously. They're very dedicated to it. They will plan gaming sessions in advance, either by themselves or with others online. Um, they'll spend a lot of time playing games. They're well informed about the game they're playing. They'll belong to forums, they'll belong to groups. They'll alpha and beta test new versions of the games. They will know a great deal about the gaming industry. Hardcore gamers tend to play a certain type of game. Now you could argue that some hardcore gamers would play Farmville, but probably the titles that we're talking about are more the titles that are played on a dedicated platform, such as an Xbox or a PlayStation, rather than it being a mobile-based uh, game. So that's your hardcore gamer. We can move on then and look at the, the midcore gamer, and the midcore gamer is somewhere between a casual gamer and a hardcore gamer. A midcore gamer really enjoys the games that they play. They're often a fan of the gaming industry. Um, they are, like I say, somewhere between hardcore and casual, but they tend to have a better balance in their lives around gaming than perhaps the, um, the hardcore gamer. They love the game industry. Um, they may dedicate time to playing their games, but they probably play a wider variety of games than the hardcore gamer, or maybe not. But it's really about the amount of time they will dedicate to playing their games. And notice that a hardcore gamer may not be a better game player or better at playing games than a midcore game uh, gamer. It's the amount of time and effort that you put into it, and whether for a hardcore gamer, you could probably say that gaming is their is their their preferred hobby, their preferred way of spending time. The last one is a relatively small bunch of gamers, and this is the pro gamer. Now the pro gamer is different from any other gamer in that they make a proportion or all of their money from playing games. They enter tournaments and they need to win tournaments in order to play games. They tend to be hardcore gamers, obviously, because they end up playing an awful lot of games. So that gives you an idea into the audience. And don't forget, we were talking about looking at the uh, the audience as one of the three areas we're going to focus on for this assignment, for this task rather. You could also break your audience up in terms of age group. That you've got, uh, you've got the preschool age group, you've got the tweens, you've got the young adults moving into uh, adults. So let's move on to the next area, which is going to be uh, the genre. When we talk about genre, in front of you you've got the, the definition from Wikipedia, a specific category of games related by similar gameplay characteristics. So these are the characteristics that we're talking about, that a genre of game, a game that belongs to a certain genre, will be defined by a certain, a certain number of characteristics, which would be true of any of the games in that genre. First person shooter being an example, whether it's Call of Duty or whether it's Halo, take out the backstory, um, take out the types of weapons that you're holding, and, it's, and the games are very similar. Um, they're not defined necessarily by the story, the story can change, uh, or by its medium of play, whether it's uh, something that you would do on, a, on a, a mobile device or whether you would do it on a, on a, on a console, more often a console, let's, let's be honest, in, in the case of a first person shooter. But it's the way the player interacts with the game that tends to be similar across games that are in the same genre. This is a list of genre from the App Store, it's the current list. And don't forget, this list of genre is something that no one is ever going to agree on. And often you find that games can sit inside one, two, three, or even more different genre. If you think about a driving game, it's both, it could be arcade, it could be simulation, it could be racing at the same time, thinking about that example. This is the list of genre which was on Wikipedia. Action, action adventure, adventure, you've got first person shooter, you've got strategy games, the likes of civilization, sports games and different other, other games like board games, but we're not going to be focusing on board games today. So when we talk about genre, you're going to need to make sure that you research the different genre for the games, the three games that you're describing. Make sure that you state what genre your games belong to and what the key characteristics of that genre are. So you're going to need to do a tiny bit of research there. But again, just like P1, you will find that you 
you do actually know most of this, but it will help to do a bit of research online just to get a few bullet points, a few a, a, few, a bit of guidance to show you what um, what the characteristics of the different genre are. And don't forget, if you do use a web page to help you, put that in your bibliography. Make sure that you cite your sources. It's not a problem using sources, just make sure you cite them properly. Let's pick one genre just by way of an example so you know the sort of research you're going to be doing. First person shooter. So we're talking about a game like Halo, Call of Duty, Medal of Honor. Um, the player is characteristically in first person view. Remember we talked about first person as opposed to third person view because of that immediacy, it's exciting, you feel like you're there. So obviously for a first person shooter, that would be a characteristic that carries across the entire genre. Um, typically, the player has a large arsenal of weapons that they will use to defeat the enemy. It can be single player, it can be multiplayer, and it, there are defined targets, uh, achievements within um, each layer of the game. There's also a campaign mode and different other modes as well. And often, in terms of backstory, there's a dystopian backstory that this is after some terrible cataclysmic event like a nuclear war or, or, or whatever. So those are the sort of characteristics you can associate with uh, the first person shooter genre. Now that we've, now that we've had a look at um, the games that you're talking about and the characteristics and the audience and we've had a look at genre, you can now see quite clearly how you will have a little bit of information that you found out about each of these three elements and you'll need to weave those together into a bit of prose about two A4 sides long where you're focusing on your three different games and for each of those games you're talking about the characteristics of the game itself, about the audience and then about the genre. Now these are the features that I recommend that you focus on. It's certainly a starting point. You do not have to talk about all of these by any means but I think these are the, the characteristics, the features of games that probably lend themselves to being, to, to being able to describe genre and audience. The graphical user interface, is it brightly coloured, is it darker colours, teams for things like Halo, think about how it's a dystopian future where everything's grey, everything's quite industrial. Um, brighter colours tend to be for um, pre-school children or for younger children, think about the scoring and how that works. Um, achievements in the games. How many rules are there? Is the game complicated to play? And that lends itself to deciding whether it's a casual game or whether it's something that will be more played by the hardcore gamers. What about the backstory? Um, about the Peggy rating? What about the language used in the game? Is there bad language used in the game that leads it to being a, an 18? Is there violence in the game? Is there gore in the game? Are there drug and sexual references in the game. These would all again point to a certain age group which is a certain type of audience. Um, and how hard is the game to play? So those are the sorts of features, the characteristics of games that you may well want to focus on when you come to write this task. So lastly, just to recap, you're going to pick three games. Use those features that I've just described as a starting point and discuss how those features appeal to different audiences. Talk about the type of gamer, hardcore, midcore, casual, etc. Talk about the age of the gamer. Discuss how the features vary according to the genre and the type of gamer. And just make sure, here's the key question, and when the moderator looks at your work, do you understand how genre and audience and characteristics of games are all linked? And do you understand what they all mean? Thank <laughs> you.